Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Hollywood show now here, about to give you the long-awaited Injustice Gods Among Us update patch 1.21. I don't know why it's 2.21, but for some reason it's version 1.21. As you can see, it's updated about an hour ago. Thank you for the tweet. I forget who mentioned it, but thank you for that. So in this update, ninjas from ancient Japan. Behold two new challenge characters based off DC's New Batman Ninja movie, Batman Ninja Batman, and Batman Ninja Lord Joker. Which I'm obviously more excited for the Joker because we have a lot less good Jokers. We have a ton of Batmans. This arch enemy duo brings unique abilities, new team synergies, and powerful gear to Injustice Gods Among Us. Batman Ninja Batman uses his kunai knife to strike down his enemies, causing them to bleed. And Batman Ninja Lord Joker tosses his iconic Japanese paper fan, then watches it explode. Better yet, Joker's passive Cult of the Demon powers up his attacks to cause 100% life drain and enemy life drain heals him. So, for example, Rebirth Jessica Cruz, a Flashpoint Batman Flashpoint Deathstroke that invests heavily on combo enders might be punished by using their combo ender ability. Assemble your team now and fight to add these ninja characters to your roster. Now the one thing I'm curious about, oh and it even got a nice update to the splash screen, that's cool. That's in line with Mortal Kombat X and Injustice 2 getting new splash screen. So, I'm a big fan of that. Just to make it look cleaner. So, whoever did the artwork, give the guy a raise. Give him a fucking bacon pizza for me or whatever you want to call it. I'm totally down with that. So, I'm curious if the current challenge character is going to be a new challenge or if it's going to be a repeat challenge this week. Yep, it's Killer Cock this week. So next week, it is going to be... We don't actually know. It looks like they cleaned up some of the logos. So there's a Killer Frost challenge pack that contains one gold character from previous challenges with an increased chance at Killer Frost plus two support or upgrade cards, which is 200,000 credits. So you have a 93.84% chance to get a gold character, a 6.16% chance to get Killer Frost. So... Roughly a 3.07% chance, if my math is right, to get a gold character. Now, it is challenge character, so my math could be even worse on that. There is a TV pack that gives you Arrow Green, Arrow Reverse Flash, and Metahuman the Flash. This pack, I feel, is reasonably priced at $14.99. Reverse Flash is a super annoying character to deal with because he can rinse the buffs. And if he takes area damage when you knock the first person out, he will gain health to full health. And MetaHuman the Flash is a really good multiplayer character, which I will have to show off in the future. And Arrow Green Arrow kind of makes sense. Not really a good character. He does have some interesting combo enders, but he's not going to win you the game. It's all about Reverse Flash and MetaHuman the Flash. Those characters are really good. And the Survivor Pack is back with MCAC Scorpion, Scorpion and Bounty Hunter Loba. So the most wanted pack contains three of the most desired characters in the game, including Rebirth Jessica Cruz, Blackest Knight Martian Manhunter, Arkham Knight Batgirl, and more. So they actually did change the most wanted pack. So you now have a chance to get Arkham Knight Batgirl, which is really surprising because the Arkham pack normally had this. You have an 8% chance to get Blackest Knight Martian Manhunter, 8% chance to get Rebirth Jessica Cruz, 8% chance to get Shazam, an 8% chance to get Teen Titans Raven. And there's 10 other gold characters within this pack that you can get. So that's really interesting. So it looks like they gave you a way to get Teen Titans Raven. Keep in mind, Teen Titans Raven is not Rebirth Raven. Rebirth Raven, in my opinion, is far better because it's a controllable power swap. Whereas Teen Titans Raven can be good. But you have to use it with a bunch of power generation to make it useful. I think the big prize in this is Arkham Knight Batgirl. Arkham Knight Batgirl is, in my opinion, in my new top five. Because if you're using any Arkham characters, it's going to basically save their life. And she has a lot of stun mechanics that are super good. So they do not have the early access for one of the Batman Ninja characters. And I think that's a huge mistake because if you want to cash in on the new Batman Ninja characters, you want to make sure that they are actually available now and not a couple days later. So in the gear locker, 
it looks like they don't actually show you can get the new gear so i don't know if there's actual new gear from the batman ninja or yeah why would you advertise injustice 2 and injustice 1 nobody plays that game anymore so we're going to take a look here and see okay it's the alien artifact which is probably the worst gear item in the game aka the mother box yeah, I don't like that gear. There's something about it. Power draining at the start of the match. Put LexCorp in, you gain power. So it is the Survivor set with the League of Assassins. Now, I'm not sure if the new Batman Ninja gear is going to be another set in Survivor. It would make total sense because it gives you a reason to actually play the mode. But it should be really interesting. If this video gets 200 likes within patch 1.21... I will promote both of the Batman Ninja characters up to Elite 7 immediately. And as soon as their breakthrough comes out, I will promote them up to Elite X on the spot. So if you like this little quick video on patch 1.21 that just got released while I was on vacation on Thursday, June 14th with one of the Batman Ninja characters expected on June 21st and the second one on July 5th, please give this video a like rating. Comment, subscribe, share this video amongst your friends, and as a favorite, check out my other Injustice Gods Among Us videos playlist, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, which are all Hollywood Chona. And this is just a service announcement. Barring anything in real life, I will be streaming Injustice 1 from 6 p.m. until sleep. And if the live stream maintains 100 concurrent viewers on YouTube, I will do daily Injustice 1 live streams all the way through... June 14th, as long as we maintain 100 concurrent viewers a day, I will be streaming daily between 6 and 9 p.m., barring work, of course. I'll have to stream earlier or later, and those days obviously won't count against the concurrent penalty. But I'll stream every night at 6 p.m., as long as you guys continue to support the game. Thank you very much, and go check out the live stream. Make sure you're subscribed here with the bell on. So you can see when I'm streaming. And also, I will be streaming on Twitch as well. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day, kids. www.youtube.com slash Hollywood Show now. Subscribe, bitches!